All right, welcome back to Good Morning Get Vale. I've got Dan Smith joining us from uh, Vale Mountain Rescue. Welcome, Dan. Good to see you. You were out of town for a little while there. A little while. We had uh, Shane Connery joining yeah. us, but you're back. Yeah, well, Shane's How was your very... travel? Good? Oh, the travel was excellent. Good. It was a lot of fun. We, yeah. we were in France on canals, renting our own boat, and uh, no crew, just the two of us, and, uh, and a lot of good restaurants, and, and of course, a, a lot of good French wine. You have, uh, <laughs> the uh, wineries that would sell you a jug full of three liters of wine for two euros and it was their best wine. I mean, it was just outstanding. So That's it was a nice great trip. Here. And We're, then you come back. When did you get back? Oh, two weeks ago. And then oh, I had to okay. have some medical stuff done. And so yeah. I had to have Shane come in. So I want to let people know first, Vail Mountain Rescue, what you're all about. Can you just give everybody just a quick synopsis of Vail Mountain Rescue? We're part of the sheriff's office, the unpaid part. Uh, if you get in trouble 25 yards off the highway, we're the people that will come to see you. Uh, some places fire department will be joining us. Most places not. Right. Uh, we're the ones that get you out of the back country. We're the ones that do get you out of the creek. Uh, we're the ones that get you out of uh, places where you've stuck your snow machine or your ATV or your UTV or your motorcycle. Uh, if you're a paraglider and fail the launch, we're the ones that come get you. It's, it's all of those things. So we want to talk about the gentleman that was hiking in Chafee County last week and he ended up disappearing for how many days before they Three. found him? Three. Tell us about, because you were a part of that. There was a oh, lot yeah. of... A lot of your team and a lot of teams involved with that search. It was a, a, a fairly large mission. This gentleman went for a climb up uh, Missouri Mountain, which is a 4.6 mile walk from the trailhead up the top of the mountain, non-technical. He got on top of the mountain and for reasons we'll go into in a, in a minute, became disoriented and came off the backside of Missouri. So he went down into a drainage 180 degrees out from his, following the trail. Now, home. Real quick, so when you're, I mean, did he just probably venture off a trail because it's all pretty well marked. I mean, it yeah, is, that trail is for but, sure. But uh, with no map, no compass, no GPS, and you forget the direction you came up and you walk off the wrong side, you're in trouble. Now, a lot of people will do that one, and there's three other peaks right around it. You can get multiple peaks in one day. He, didn't, he told us he wasn't doing that. He thought he was headed back to his car, and that's what he told his wife. Okay. And then he spent that night out. Uh, the next day was Monday, the big, big snow day. And uh, we were able to get uh, one helicopter in the air. It was a, a small one from Hats from the National Guard. They flew in horrible winds, uh, got down, did a quick search for him, and boogied back to Eagle because the weather was just too terrible. Uh, Tuesday, uh, didn't really send anybody up the hill, but uh, had people down there preventing people from going up the hill. We had family and friends wanted to go look for him. This is always a very, very bad idea. Right. Because what happens most times is one of those people gets lost. Now you have to pull your half your searchers to look for somebody that really shouldn't have been out there in the first place. On the third day, uh, uh, we found him. The, we, the, the entire group, found him. Uh, on that mission, we had four helicopters on, on the three days, uh, two military, two flight for life. We had a wow. fire suppression fixed wing aircraft that actually finally found him. This is an aircraft from 20,000 feet. It has a sensor pod, and it can find. It can read a license plate from 20,000 feet, and they were able to find him because he lit a fire. They also have heat sensors, and they were because it's for forest fires. Wow! And so they found him and uh, vectored the helicopter in to pull him out. And there's 70 people involved in this. Now, you've got somebody that that uh, when we when we do this, when we have a chat time to chat with somebody that's gotten in trouble, because we like to afterwards. Do let's let's not do this again. Let's show you why this happened. You start with, what did you do right? Well, what he did right, he stayed alive. In very stressful situations with virtually no gear, uh, he stayed alive. You're not dead till your brain tells you you're dead. And it's your brain and your heart to keep you going, and it kept him going. He has a wife and two children. I imagine that was powerful motivator. Now as the things he did wrong. Uh, he didn't have a map, a compass, or a GPS. Those things will keep you from becoming somebody's client. Can I interrupt you real sure. quick? So let's do this. You're going to hang out with me, right? Sure, yeah. Longer. I'm here for a while. I want to get into those details okay. about the right and the wrong and how to be prepared. You brought some stuff to show. A couple simple supplies can make all the difference. doesn't weigh very okay. much, and it certainly can. I'm going to do a quick weather, and then I'm going to come back and hang out with you some more. Is that okay? Pleasure. All be right. here. i got weather coming up next, and then Dan coming back with us some more details about this adventure and how you can be prepared so you don't get in trouble when you're out there. i got a weather coming up next.